Hey, this is my sort of rebuttal to Clements. I seem to be Clements like reply guy lately, which is cool. I don't mean that as an any sort of offensive attack against him or anything. I think he's a pretty bright dude and everything. But um I've noticed that, you know, he brings up interesting topics and I feel like I have something either to add or take away from that. So in this case I'm kind of taking away from that a little bit. Um and what it is is he's promoting type TypeScript as opposed to regular old vanilla JavaScript, I guess you'd say. And I am a huge fan of vanilla JavaScript. And not only am I a fan a huge of vanilla JavaScript, I'm extra huge of ES3, like old school JavaScript, like 20 years ago JavaScript. I think JavaScript was pretty much done by then. There were a few tiny little additions of things since then, but really you could uh, just code out a few things. That language was just so expandable you know, the way that it was that, like I was cut my own self off saying, is that you could code out whatever's missing, you know, so the little functions that were added later, array functions and stuff like that, you can just write those yourself if you wanted to. And then you could just have a little library or Netscape or somebody back in the day could have just released this library and you could have just dropped it into your source code and then browsers could have just naturally included it and that would have been like ES5 Lite. ES6 and above I'm 99.9% .9 completely not a fan of. I think that the vast majority of those additions to the language are just completely ridiculous. They, they're just for the pardon my language but for like the dumb masses uh people who were too used to like class-based languages and all sorts of stuff like that and there's just it, it just adds so much to the language that it's taking away from that beautiful simplicity of it i feel like and that's where i feel like es3 if i could walk away with one definitive standard at any one point in time I would take ES3 and run with it and I would be perfectly comfortable with that and the reason so is because that represented the most pure and mature object oriented system everything else after that just polluted that in my opinion and so that's what I'm going to barely briefly just kind of scratch the surface on by just taking the examples that he used to justify TypeScript and I'm going to basically show how those aren't necessarily necessary. So the first one he did was he had created a function, this function right here, and it says function, get lowercase string, my, and then it takes one parameter, my string, and then it returns my string to lowercase, to lowercase, makes sense, right? And then right here we go to call it. And this is just, uh, I happen to be using the Chromium browser. I'm not even impressed with the Chromium uh, developer tools. I prefer Firefox's developer tools over Chromium. So that being said, I think these ones are slightly lackluster of, uh, compared to Firefox's, but yet these still, out of the box, this isn't even VS Code or any fancy IDE, right? This is just the in-browser, Control-Shift-I, on a blank page, you pop up and start typing in the live REPL console. And it, what I'm going to show you is I'm not using TypeScript and if I finish this command by closing off the parenthesis here to call this get lowercase string function you can see right there I haven't even hit enter yet and it already says uncaught type error cannot read property to lowercase of undefined at get lowercase da 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 and so what I'm showing you there and then if we try it of course we get the error it basically warned us the linter warned us that we would get this error and that's to say that all you've got to do is lint your JavaScript and you don't need TypeScript in that type of a scenario. It doesn't, you know, there's nothing really that TypeScript's adding other than the fact you can argue that like type-based stuff or static languages that the TypeScript's sort of leaning towards copying because to my knowledge, TypeScript basically is like a transpiler to regular old JavaScript, but it just does some so-called quote-unquote compile time static checks. And so what it would do is it's sort of like a, a, a linter, but it's a, a compile time linter, you know, it, instead of like you have your editing time linter that you just saw right there that tells you right out the gate. Let's say I was using like a plain text editor, I could run a third-party linter and it would warn me about that 
or in the case of TypeScript, you go to transpile that to plain old vanilla JavaScript for the browser or whatnot, and it would probably tell you, hey, warning, you, you know, you've got a problem here, it looks like. And short of that, of course, you're going to get like what I have here is the actual runtime error, which we're ideally trying to avoid. So all that's to say is that, you know, the TypeScript thing a lot of times is just really close to just a linter. It, that's all you need. You know, I didn't even have to hit run on that to find out that problem there. And if I did really care, there it it's the semantics of the way that we create our programs. Now that we're getting more and more away from the proper way these days, I'm not. I, I just, just now online, I just purchased some 15 to 20 year old-ish books on JavaScript, like some old Douglas Crawford stuff, all that, because that is the heyday to me is like the early 2000s of JavaScript material. Um, but that being said, like now towards the what I call the ES6 plus days, like arguably about 2017 was when ES6 seemed to really just rock it out. People started just, they started using const keywords and stuff. I still use the ver keyword. I don't use const a dynamic, a, a pure object-oriented language, which is what JavaScript is one of the very few languages that is leaning very close to pure object-oriented. Um, I would st arguably the most, in my opinion, around the ES3 era, maybe it, it was the most object-oriented language, purely speaking. If you go back to the original intentions of object-oriented all the way through the so-called self programming language and self was what the R&D people for lack of a better term behind Java behind object oriented programming back in the day self was the language they had worked up to and that's a language that JavaScript heavily borrowed from that I can't even think of any other languages off the top of my head that did and that's where you get like the prototypal system and all that which a lot of people are scared from because they're so used to stupid classes pardon my language but it, it's a more advanced it's a more developed uh, purely object oriented thing pure object orientedness is about late binding of all things you know go back and read the basic bullet points from L and K and read what those things are about. It's not about statically, you know, making everything final and const and this type and that and making this whole rigidness. Object oriented programming is about malleability, you know. So there are considerations that you need to take there and be careful of and watch out for. And if you're really worried about it, use like a linter, you know, make tests and stuff like that so anyway that's just the first example right there I've just demonstrated that that you know that linter as soon as I finish this begin to finish this statement and make that call they're like hey boom you know not gonna happen so that negates the the necessity for TypeScript right there and then if I come over here to this next example he has this uh, fairly nice example of a situation where TypeScript might help somebody. But again, I jump back to my argument that you don't necessarily you just look at the the more of the semantics. I might not be using that term. I'm using it a little bit loosely there, but of how you're you're architecting your code, you know, how you're building up the structures of your code versus and then you won't have to rely on the TypeScript so much because like right here you see there's two dots response dot data dot has succeeded for one thing when you do two dots like that on an object that is a code smell that doesn't necessarily mean you're doing it wrong and you have to change it or anything like that but that is a code smell that says hey that should be like a, a good linter in my opinion I've never really seen what I personally consider a good linter maybe I should write one but uh, it should warn you and say hey you know why, what's up with this double dot notation so that's the first big code smell there and then the second thing in my opinion and the second thing here you'll notice so what's going on is here's the function right and then here's the uh, the API response definition and I've switched a few things you know I shortened what his sentences were and I used the ver keyword instead of const because I think that's ridiculous <laughs> you know like why can't I change what API response is if I make it a const 
can I can't change it right but then I can still mutate these values in here even though I make that a const so just it gives you this false sense of security and stuff and then uh, another big thing which matters less and less maybe every day but by me sticking to like the ES3 style JavaScript I can go back 20 years almost and any browser since then within reason is going to run my code just fine you know any interpreter or any compiler of javascript is going to run my stuff with this es6 plus and typescript well mainly es6 plus right like the modern ecma scripts you have to have a very recent browser and all of your users have to have you know all the systems have to have that more recent interpreter on there where I don't have to worry, you know, that that's just a zero concern of mine virtually, unless somebody's using a browser literally from like the 90s or something. And even then, it's like, I don't know, sometimes I'll just ink around and go try and make stuff work. Right here, you can see I have Netscape 2. I have that browser there. So if I want to dink around with it, boom, there it is. And I can run essentially JavaScript 1.0. And then right here, I have Firefox 1.0. Point zero point eight, the very first Firefox, which is taking forever to load. But so being ES3, this is basically my ES3 um, test bed right here. Like if I want to go back and see if something I'm writing is pretty much pure ES3, I can just run it right in this browser. The developer tools aren't quite as handy, but then of course I have like a modern version of Firefox and Chromium, which is the open source version of Chrome. Okay, but anyway, back to the point here. So looking at what's wrong with the data structure, you know, so this is an, the object literal notation, just in case you're not completely familiar with JavaScript for some reason. Um, and so basically JSON more or less. And so what's going on in here, you could see he obviously just drummed up probably a simple example. This isn't necessarily real world, right? I would hope that a real world example would be better constructed than this. So. For one thing with this data dot has succeeded, this should just be response dot has succeeded, right? So that will get rid of that double dot thing in there. You only want the one dot. And it, you know, you could have that out here, like pit has succeeded out here. And then the message is the data. So that's redundant right there. Why would you have data message? Unless you did, you know, you might have multiple properties within your data. That could make sense. But that's a whole nother thing. And then the other issue around this is that we're looking at properties. So what this is doing here is this is returning, this is digging into an object and it's actually going to a property, attribute, variable, member, whatever you want to call it, value, right? It's it's not calling a method on that object. So that's not pure object oriented programming. And this stems back to the early days of JavaScript and stuff right around the turn of the century when it was you know, and to this day, it's probably still true a lot of times, but it's expensive to create an object. And then it's expensive to call a method on an object instead of just creating a planar scalar variable or, you know, just calling the property directly instead of typing in this extra method, you know, to encapsulate that property value. And a bunch of people, we were all pressured in the early 2000s to like encapsulate everything and protect it from all this whatever and it just turned out that that was really just slowing down our code and more code equals a higher potential for errors and stuff like that is one argument but speaking of purely object-oriented programming we should especially these days where the the cost is just completely minimized to do that i know i want to say it was like speaking of java not javascript necessarily uh i think it was by java 5 around 2005, 2006, that they objects started getting cheap. If you needed to create a bunch of like, you know, smallish kind of objects and dispose of them and recreate them and stuff pretty quickly, Java got to where it could do that. It knew, hey, I'm supposed to be a Java or excuse me, an object oriented programming language. So I need to get better about creating and handing out objects. And so that was something they finally got around to. If I'm wrong about Java 5, by Java 7 for sure, I think it was really, you know, of course it gets probably incrementally better across the versions, but at some point along those lines, it just, it dramatically just increased. And so I think that's where we're at with these newer JavaScript engines and stuff is that they're able to do a lot of that stuff 
a lot quicker. So if you are going to take advantage of a modern system, um, instead of changing, you know, using these modern syntaxes that are so crufty and nasty, in my opinion, especially when you bring in frameworks, um, consider using the older, lighter weight syntax that is more uh, prone to, you know, pure object orientedness and uh, just take advantage of the speed that you get today. And that way your code will run on older stuff. You don't have to worry about any sort of compatibility issues. And in worst case, it'll probably just run really slow on a really old browser. And somebody who's running a really old browser for some reason is probably not only used to stuff running slow, they're probably used to it breaking. So if your stuff at least didn't break, that would be really cool. But anyway, um, yeah, so I would, I would add in behavior and basically encapsulate this. Get rid of the redundancy and add behaviors, and that way you're writing the method once in here. You test this as its own unit, right? And then, so you know that like you're throwing all these test scenarios of things you don't want or do want or whatever, you know, behaviors and outcomes. And then you'll know once you've tested that unit in isolation, you know you can go throw that anywhere in production and it's its own object, it's its own entity and it speaks for itself. You don't have to worry about having this sort of spaghettiness in here to make sure that everything lines up or relying on JavaScript to all of a sudden have this strong typing, static typing thing. And so again, the other thing about types is that types is that word is sort of synonymous with like you know an object itself is a type and a class is a type an interface is a type all those things basically you can use the word type to describe all those so with object oriented programming we want to go more for checking interfaces and not checking that this is a quote unquote boolean type we want to see is does this object have a boolean interface on it does that make sense so you might have to build up a little bit you know especially and it, what, what's so bad about that what's so bad about creating your own little utility library that you just keep along and that's part of your your game you know where it's like that's what you bring to the table you bring your little utility library you know and maybe you intermix it with other people's libraries that's what people used to do way back in the day that's what frameworks have become is people are like hey i need all this functionality so they run off and build some big bloated framework and it's like ah just carry around a few little cut and paster things or whatever that you might use or there might be ways in newer systems or whatever to uh to do stuff but through inheritance you can inherit behaviors onto an object right so you just get a little bit creative with that inheriting a behavior so create a little boolean interface it doesn't have to be a quote unquote java interface or you know that's not what i mean i mean just create a boolean interface or whatever type you want that you're so worried about and then in that one place you can add the checks and balances and what it should do and everything so that anywhere even if you go to call something that isn't a boolean it could still offer that interface and it could provide you with a message or a warning or do whatever you want you know it's that's how objects get i don't want to go i, I want to just move on from that but that's just an example of how malleable objects can be and that's more the direction we should go we shouldn't need to extend this language anymore you know we've already extended it twice as far as it ever should have ne needed to go but now we just it's about an object oriented programming language should be able to build up itself with its existing language constructs you know sorry to get so uh what do you call it about it what what am i being an a zealot an advocate so whatever okay and here's basically his last major example where this is supposedly typescript right here and he was demonstrating how he could you know uh change this payload thing he could pull a letter out of there and it'd give him a squiggly line or right here this is supposed to be a boolean true or false thing and he changed that to a one so if you come up here all right basically he's importing whatever this is up here i don't think it really matters for the most part right now right here we have a const Ooh, gross 
Um, we have a variable name initial state, which we're, here you can see state is an initial state and it's of a type. This certificate info, which has, you know, has error, takes two booleans in there, um, roughly speaking. So, thinking for a minute here. I mean, just if you just look at how crufty that is to me, I mean, I'm sure somebody's programming this day in and day out. That's like, that's nothing. That's like complete simplicity to them. And that's fine. But the thing is, especially for somebody like me, I bounce around to so many different projects and languages and stuff. It's like, I'll be studying. I, I don't even remember the last time I was looking at JavaScript code like this. I, I mean, it was probably definitely within the last year, I'd say, but yeah, definitely in the last year. But uh, it was that over six months ago, you know what I mean? So, and then I was looking at Python code, I think yesterday, and then the day before that, I was doing x86 assembly. So I'm all over the board. So it just, it's not fun to go back and like try and decipher little nuances of, especially once you pour frameworks into it, it just gets disgusting. And a lot of those are so slow and bloated and buggy anyway. But anyway, um, this is another thing where we're using where he's using a uh, he's doing like these scalar type of values in a pure object oriented system which JavaScript should have become by now like I was been stressing is that this should be this shouldn't be little uh, we should see a lot more parentheses you know we should be calling a lot more behaviors here and stuff like that so I thought of this earlier right before I hit record of a good a better example about this um but yeah he's returning an object that just it's basically just a bag of data right here like is loading one whatever I just I don't think I think this could be better constructed this whole thing of like how this is handled right here it's just not not pretty um but that's something I guess I'll leave to you for an exercise or myself in the future of a way to refactor this back into a more object oriented interface about how is loading is true. It's like, how would we even know is loading is true? What's going on here? I think this code just needs to be completely switch action type, get certificate loading info. Um, so yeah, if it's an info success, then return this. So, I don't know. I this just seems redundant right here to me. Like why if this is a get certificate info success, then why can't we just return maybe a success object? So that's what this is, right? This is a literal object that's going on here. And um I don't know. I just I don't see the big deal about sending it a one or not. That that internal state shouldn't matter. That's what I guess I'll fall back to here is that this should be a behavior. So this object should have behaviors encapsulating this stuff right here. So if we're going to return something that says is loading is true, then this should have a behavior attached to it that, that this object we return has an is loading method is what I'm basically going to say here. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of implementation and all that, but that's just, that's my argument. Thanks for listening. Sorry. I drag everything out at least twice as long as I intend to, but, uh, yeah, it's it, pure object-oriented programming is something I, I'd love to have a more discussion on with people because it's such an interesting topic and you can create just totally legible code. You can create sentences of code if, if it's done right. Um, and we've just gone the complete opposite way and a lot of the reason we've done that is because these so-called instructors at colleges and code schools and stuff weren't comfortable teaching prototypal inheritance and objects and all that which is understandable i was not comfortable with that system myself for a really really long time because it's so non-traditional so to speak and it needs to become traditional it needs to make more sense because that is the superior system but anyway thanks for hearing me out have a good one